Hello everyone, it is Ryan back on the Syntax Byte. In this video, we're going to be talking about doing ray casting with 3.js to do mouse picking. So basically, ray casting pictures just like shooting a ray across the screen to hit whatever objects in your scene from your mouse. Okay, so it could be used for other things besides mouse picking, but I'm going to show you how to shoot the ray out from the mouse um, and find what the mouse is hovering over in your 3D scene using 3.js today. Um, we're also uh, going to be looking at this in the context of our checkers board that we created in the past two videos. If you didn't watch those videos, no worries. This video will stand on its own to show you ray casting, uh, but we're going to be continuing to build on this project with the idea being that we can pick a piece and move it, right? So that's our end goal here. We're gonna start with just a quick hover effect on the uh, pieces and then work from there. So to start off with the ray casting, we're gonna add like a couple of variables into our code. So the first is gonna be a vector 2D that is gonna hold our normalized mouse coordinates. So we'll talk about that in just a second. And then we're also going to have the ray caster. I'm declaring these just at the global level in my JavaScript so I can access them from my other functions. Um, we can go ahead and just kind of initialize them anywhere here. I think right here with our renderer is probably a good spot. So we can go ahead and say that mouse is equal to a new 3.vector2 and that our raycaster is equal to a new 3.raycaster. Okay. Next thing we need to do is actually to respond to mouse move events and store those normalized coordinates. So if you head over to the 3.js docs here and look at the raycaster code example, they actually do have here um, an on mouse move function that we can basically just copy and what this does it does exactly what it says it does It places the mouse coordinates to be between minus one and plus one This function as you'll see here it uses window inner height and window inner width um, that means that Your scene should be that size if your scene is not that size keep in mind you may need to adjust the function I believe it works if your canvas is not the same size, but in the upper left hand corner of the page to simply use um, your dimensions in place of here. If you have something like the canvas in the center of the screen, then you may need to do a little bit more math to figure out exactly how it works. Obviously it's not possible for me to cover every solution here, but like I said, if you're using the common example that you're using the full browser for your application then you can simply just copy this function off the 3.js website that makes sure it has no issues for us and we can just paste that into our code. And obviously mouse um, was a global variable that we declared earlier, so make sure that those match up if you didn't name yours mouse. Uh, now of course we have the function, we also need to copy the code for adding the actual event listener itself. So we'll go ahead and do that and now our mouse coordinates should be stored correctly. Okay, and of course the link to that documentation will be down in the description. Now what we actually need to do is actually pick out a piece um, from the scene and start to, uh, to make it transparent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a function here above my animate and I'm gonna call it uh, pick piece. Uh, we'll call it maybe like hover piece actually. Hover pieces. Okay. And what we're going to do in hover pieces is any pieces that our mouse is hovering over, we're going to make them partially transparent. So what we can do is we can do raycaster set from camera. Camera, or sorry, we pass in the mouse coordinates first. And remember, this is not passing like our mouse or something. This is the normalized coordinates that we had from that function before. And then our camera. Now that's just the setup for the raycaster to actually get the objects it's intersecting with. We do const intersects is equal to raycaster dot intersect objects. And then we specify scene dot children. Now note, I do believe this doesn't do a deep search. So in my case for scene dot children, 
because my board is actually part of a separate group up here I've seen to add board we built this board as a three dot group it won't return like our squares of our board um, even though they could be like a deeper children so it seems to only return uh, deal with surface level children um, so just be aware of that when you're using the raycaster um, that can be useful um, later when we want to only check our board it's easy to do do board.children of course we wouldn't expect it to go back but just to be aware that it doesn't seem to do a deep search here so now we can loop the intersects um, you could also just take the first intersect so, sorry it's like C code here let I equal 0 I is less than intersects dot length um, I plus plus but yeah like I said you could also just check if there's one and then take the first one because this will if, there, if we're hovering over multiple objects which is kind of tough to do but I think I'll show you how we can end up doing it it will make them both partially transparent in this case um, we can do um, intersects I dot object dot material dot transparent is equal to true we can do intersects i dot object dot material dot opacity is equal to 0 0.5 and uh, we'll just leave things like that now something to note if uh, here we're always doing when we build our pieces we're always doing a new material which means that each piece has its own material belonging to it if we had instead used a variable earlier and then referred to that this material might belong to mul multiple pieces meaning when we do something like changing the opacity of it on one piece it might change for the other pieces so just be aware of that uh, lastly I'm gonna call hover pieces just before I render the scene every animate function um, and with that assuming everything went well we should actually see that the pieces are partially transparent when we reload the scene and hover over them um, and we do and like I said um, it doesn't actually reset the um, material at the moment so once we mouse over them and make them partially transparent there's no way to uh, to reset the material so cool um, that's how that works we hover over can make them partially transparent and like you'll notice how I can hover this one and then hover the one in the background too just by moving my mouse because even though it hits this one first we're, we're doing all the children right so that's where that loop is working uh, but you may not want that okie dokie so the next thing to do is to go ahead and reset the materials before we call this so that um, it's only the one that we're actually currently ho hovering over that is partially transparent. So I'm going to make a function called reset materials. In this, we're going to do for um, let i equal zero. I is less than scene dot children dot length. Um, I plus plus. We'll do if uh, scene dot children dot uh, or sorry I dot material make sure that is um, something that actually has a material associated with it we'll do scene dot children um, I dot material dot opacity is equal to 1.0 then before we call hover pieces we'll always call reset materials and we can see that now um, when we hover over it it goes transparent and then when we don't hover over it um, it goes uh, back to being totally opaque so the next thing is probably to allow us to actually select a um, a piece so how do we do that well we can actually add a click listener and then ha set a variable to be our selected piece so I'm gonna start with selected piece equals null um, and then we can do a click listener so what we want to do is we want to do a I'm gonna have an, a function on click it's gonna take uh, 
an event, although I don't think we're going to use the event. And then we can do window.add event listener, click on click. And then in here, we'll do raycaster.set from camera. So we're going to redo what we did earlier. We'll do mouse, camera, and then we'll say let intersects equal raycaster.intersect objects, scene.children. And in this case, we're just going to say if intersects is greater than zero, because we could click and not be clicking a piece. Um, so we got to make sure that we check that we actually have any intersects. But if we do, we will say um, selected piece is equal to intersects zero dot object dot user data dot current square. Okay. So that's our selected piece. At that point, we can just save it. Um, and then what we will do is we will not reset the color of a piece that is selected. So we will say here, if it has material, um, we can say, <clears throat> Scene dot children, I um, sorry. Um, we'll do scene dot children I dot um, user data dot current square um, is equal to selected piece. If so, we'll do 0 0.5, otherwise do 1.0. Um, so yeah, that resets our materials. And we'll see now it should actually maintain the piece. So if I click it, it doesn't work. So we'll have a look. Mouse is undefined in on mouse move. I don't understand why that would be the case. Okay, so a quick little debugging session there. Uh, we just need to put intersects.length is greater than zero, um, and then it works. So you can see that we can select the piece there and do that. So now we can select a piece, um, but what happens, um, like how can we move it somewhere, right? So what we actually wanna do is be able to move this piece somewhere, totally fair. So what we can do is um, so what we can do is after we set the selected piece, we're actually just going to go ahead and return, um, and then if we haven't returned, we're going to keep going. And so what we want to do is actually see if we have a selected piece already in place, meaning selected piece is not null. Um, what do we want to do? Well, we want to see if we can actually um, get any, like if they're clicking on one of the squares where we can move to. So what we can do is we can do, again, raycaster.set from camera, uh, mouse camera. Um, we actually probably don't even need to do that one again, but you know what, that's fine. Um, we'll do raycaster.intersect objects but this time we're going to use board.children so remember that group I said of our board we're going to use board.children and using that we can see if um, the
we can see if they are clicking on one of our um, squares. The uh, it could be an, it could be a blank square. Um, in this case, it actually we're not guaranteed to get a blank square, so we may want to do some checking around that. But I'm not going to worry about that for today. Um, so what we can do is we can say um, if um, sorry, this should be um, intersects is equal to that. If intersects dot length is greater than zero then we know they've clicked a square um, but what we want to do is we want to also do an and intersects zero dot object dot user data dot cube number and or I think it's a square number actually so it is so it is square number so we want to just go ahead here and make sure there's a square number. Basically, we only assign square numbers to squares where um, it's a dark square. We didn't assign square numbers to squares that are light squares. So if it's not a, if it's a light square, you can't move there anyway. Um, so it doesn't matter. We can just ignore it. Um, so we want to make sure it's a dark square and that it has a square number that we can move to. Doing this, then we can say um, const target square, meaning the square we want to move to is equal to intersects zero dot object dot user data dot square number. We can say const selected object because remember we didn't necessarily get it up here, right? What, so we want to know what's already selected. We'll do scene dot children dot find because that's an array. We can say child and then we use an arrow function where child dot user data dot current square is equal to the selected piece. Okay. Um, so that's the piece that we know is currently selected. If we didn't find the selected object, or I guess uh, not target square, we'll return. So if either of these didn't work out, we'll just return um, and not go any further with making the move. However, if it did work, we'll say const target position is equal to position for square, which is a function we had previously in one of our previous videos that takes a square number and gives us a position in the world space. For target square, the place we want to move to, then we can say selected uh, object dot position dot set. We'll do target position dot x. We're going to leave it at the same y. So we'll do selected object dot position dot y and target position dot z. Um, selected object dot current square. We have to keep that up to date. Um, so we're going to uh, set that to target square. And then finally, we can select set the selected piece to be null so that it doesn't um, continue to be selected. Uh, so with that, we should have a move made with no move validation. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. All right, so we still have our pieces. Let's go ahead and click this one and then click this here. And we can see it does move. We can see if we click a blank square, it doesn't work. But if we click that, it works. Right now, we can move the black or the white pieces. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, we can actually, like I said, somehow get them on the same spot. Um, so there's a bit of a bug there. There's also no move validation, but it's a start um, for, for checkers here. We can select pieces. We can move them around on the board. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video on ray casting. My name has been Ryan from the Syntax Byte. And um, if you like the video, definitely um, drop a like. Leave a comment if you had any problems um, or if you just want to say thanks for the video and I will catch you guys in the next video.